Hello there. Today I would like to read an interesting account that I found in the writings of David Thompson. Now, in his travels, David Thompson visited a great many of the native peoples out west. He listened to the stories of the elders and he wrote some of them down in his memoirs. I would like to read an excerpt from one such account. My apologies in advance to any relevant parties if and when I get some pronunciations wrong. If I get anything very wrong, let me know in the comments and I'll fix it. Also, I can't be bothered to try and find relevant royalty-free images, so I'll just put up some footage I took on a walk. This tale was told by Saga Mapi, who lived among the Pegans. The Pegans were always the frontier tribe, and upon whom the Snake Indians made their attacks. These latter were very numerous, even without their allies, and the Pegans had to send messengers among us to procure help. Two of them came to the camp of my father, and I was then about his age, pointing to a lad about sixteen years. He promised to come and bring some of his people, the Nahathaways, with him, for I am myself of that people, and not of those with whom I am now. My father brought about twenty warriors with him. We owned a few guns, but very little ammunition, and these were left to hunt for the families. Our weapons was a lance, mostly pointed with iron, some few of stone, a bow and a quiver of arrows. The bows were of larch, and the length came to about the chin. The quiver had about fifty arrows, of which ten had iron points. The others were headed with stone. He carried his knife on his breast and his axe on his belt. Such was my father's weapons, and those with him had much the same weapons. I had a bow and arrows and a knife, of which I was very proud. We came to the Pegans and their allies. They were camped in the plains on the left bank of the river, the north side, and were a great many. We were feasted, a great war tent was made, and a few days passed in speeches, feasting and dances. A war chief was elected by the chiefs, and we got ready to march. Our spies had been out and had seen a large camp of snake Indians on the plains of the Eagle Hill, and we had to cross the river in canoes and on rafts, which we carefully secured for our retreat. When we had crossed and numbered our men, we were about 350 warriors. They had their scouts out now and came to meet us. Both parties made a great show of their numbers, and I thought that they were more numerous than ourselves. After some singing and dancing, they sat down on the ground and placed their large shields before them, which covered them. We did the same, but our shields were not so many, and some of our shields had to shelter two men. Theirs were all placed touching each other. Their bows were not so long as ours, but of better wood, and the back covered with the sinews of the bisons, which made them very elastic. And their arrows went a long way and whizzed about as balls do from guns. They were all headed with a sharp, smooth black stone, which broke when it struck anything. Our iron-headed arrows did not go through their shields, but stuck in them. On both sides several were wounded, but none lay on the ground. And night put an end to the battle, without a life being taken on either side. And in those days such was the result unless one party was more numerous than the other. And that's where I'm going to leave things off. I hope you found this as interesting as I did. I'll talk more about this at some point, once I've finished gathering resources. Bye-bye.